What's up guys, I'm in Portland at my favorite breakfast spot, Off the Waffle, and I want to walk you through Nike's first big innovation, the Waffle Soul. Come on over here, we're going to go back to my law school days, and I'm going to break this patent down for you. Now don't be intimidated, the patent is only four and a half pages long. And to give you an idea, to compare this to a modern day patent, you see this one was filed in 1972 by Bill Bowerman, and it was granted in 1974. Let, let's fast forward about 40 years, and right here is the patent for power laces with the Nike Mag. And this right here is 29 pages long. So don't be intimidated, we're gonna flip through just four and a half pages right here. You'll notice up here that the patent is for an athletic shoe for artificial turf. The inventor is William J. Bowerman and the assignee is BRS Inc. Assignee means that Bowerman assigns his rights to the patent over to BRS, which of course we know is Blue Ribbon Sports, which was Nike before Nike. Let's have a look right here at the abstract. It says, an athletic shoe suitable for use on artificial turf is described, including an improved upper of porous multiple layer construction and an improved sole having integral polygon shaped studs. Okay, now there's a lot there and I circled stuff and wrote stuff on the side. So we're not only talking about the waffle sole here, we're talking about the upper, we're talking about the sole, and the sole has different polygon shaped studs. Now remember from school that a polygon is a multi-sided figure. Now let's keep going down here and you'll see that we're talking about greatly reducing the weight of a football shoe. Now that's really interesting, a football shoe. So Nike's comparing the waffle sole to a football shoe or a cleat. And you'll see all throughout this patent, I highlighted everywhere in pink that talks about a football shoe. And you probably wouldn't think that the waffle sole would have a lot to do with a football shoe, but that's what Nike was comparing it to, or the US Patent Office actually is what was comparing it to. And remember that the very first Nike was a football shoe, and it was called the Nike. Let's look down here, and you'll see that it says, the sole has short, multi-sided, polygon-shaped studs of square, rectangle, or triangle cross sections, having a plurality of flat sides which provide gripping edges that give greatly improved traction. So remember, polygon is a multi-sided figure, and here we're saying it could be a square, rectangle, or triangle. And then as we flip the page, we have six drawings. You'll see we've got the upper, we've got the outsole. These cross sections right here, figure three is close up between the threes right here, and figure four is close up between the fours right here. And notice down here on the outsole, we've got squares, and then down here, we've got rectangles and triangles. So we've got all different kinds of polygons. We'll flip the page, don't be intimidated, the background of the invention is discussed, and again, it compares everything to a football shoe. Let's read this first paragraph. The present invention relates generally to athletic shoes suitable for use in games requiring a rapid change in direction, such as those played on artificial turf surfaces, and in particular to a football shoe, which is lightweight, water resistant, and gives good traction. The term football, as used herein, includes not only American-style football, but also European-style football or soccer. And then it goes on to discuss any game, and it actually talks about lacrosse and field hockey. But remember, everything at first is being compared to a football shoe. And then it goes on to say that previous football shoes used on artificial turf do not provide good traction because they're made with circular or conical cleats or are provided with pointed cleats of other shapes. Now we're talking about the cones on the bottom of a soccer cleat or a football shoe compared to the waffle soles. I love this part right here. It talks about actually the distance between the studs on the outsole of a waffle. And it says right here that by arranging the studs in staggered rows with adjacent studs in each row, spaced apart by a distance at least as great as the width of such studs, the heat conducted from the artificial turf is reduced as well as improving traction. Now I wanna flip back here real quick and you'll see all of these little lines 
in between the polygon shaped studs on the bottom and that has to do with the distance between the studs now nike was not only concerned with all of these little nubs but also the distance between them so that heat wouldn't come through the waffle sole here we go down and talk more about football shoes we're talking about the uppers the weight and the breathability and then over here it talks about the goals of the present invention and then a breakdown of the brief drawings right here. Check it out right here. And that's pretty much it. You can actually go through and have a look at these drawings and make sense of every little bit of them with this right here. Enough with the patent. Let's have a look at the very first Nike shoe that was released to the public with waffle soles. You'll see right here the Oregon waffle. I want to turn it over and when you look right here you'll see the US patent number 3793750. You can actually Google 3793750 and you can print yourself out the patent that I have right here. Check this out. In the very early days of Nike, Nike actually listed all of the different shoes that were being made at the time and the various sports that those shoes were good for. And then there's just one last thing that I want to look at in this video, and it's this book called Nike Chronicle. This is one of the greatest books on vintage Nike. We're going to turn back here to page 65. It's a Japanese book, so it's numbered backwards for the states. And you'll see right here the Oregon waffle, and you can see that this shoe was made in 74 and 5, 75 through 77, and 77 through 79. And there's slight differences between the different models. When we pull out the shoe and compare it, actually what we have here is this middle one from 75 to 77. And the best way to tell is that we have the cursive Nike logo with the registered trademark. And you can see right here, a cursive Nike logo with a registered trademark. Whereas up here is the cursive logo with no trademark. And then down here is the bold capital Nike. The people that put this book together have a new edition called Chronicle Deluxe that just came out last month. I have my copy on order from Japan. I can't wait to check it out. It's been a pleasure walking you through the Oregon waffle and the waffle patent. And just remember this, at Nike, every single thing got started off the waffle.